What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's been probably, I don't know, three or so months, maybe even longer, since I've even made a video where I'm talking in it outside of doing podcasts. But here I am again, back at the garage. TBN sitting here. Over here we've got Kawasaki Canada, aka Frank. Uh, he upgraded from his 2016 to a 2019 ZX-10 for the 2020 season. He already started to make some changes to the bike because this was a sponsored bike, so he had to sell his bike at the same time he kind of picked up this bike. So naturally, he had a small window to swap over some parts. He swapped over the wheels and tires, the exhaust, uh, then he dropped it off. I swapped over his airbox and a few other small things. Gas cap, windscreens on. But for the most part, this bike here is going to be his 2.0 bike. It's going to be the same thing as it was last year. He was running 880s at 162 to 163 on pump gas. But I look forward to seeing what this bike's going to do. It should be a little faster. My goal is to get him into the 870s uh, on stock wheelbase with, the, for the most part, the same way it was set up. Um, it'd be really cool to get it into the 860s for a stock wheelbase bike because that would be pretty badass, obviously. But I don't know if that's going to be possible. He was running consistent low 880s, but this bike should definitely be capable of 870s with his son on it, who is who rides the bike. His son is about 155 or so suited uh, in basic gear because the track he runs at, they allow you to run in jeans, stuff like that. So you don't add a lot of weight in gear, like a lot of local tracks where you can get 20, 25 pounds into a suit just to meet, meet track prep. But anyway, moving on from this bike, over here we've got Rocket Taxi. He's from Georgia, his name's Dom. Um, this is gonna be the first R1 I finally get to put my hands on. It took me a while, unfortunately. I've been wanting to get one of these bikes for a while. As you'll see moving forward in my videos, there is one particular R1 that I raced down in Texas. He was one of their fastest guys, and I was very impressed with how fast his R1. He was 130 pounds, so I don't wanna you know, skip past that. However, the bike itself was still very fast to be able to go that fast. I had about 50 to 55 pounds on him, but regardless of that, he gave me one hell of a race. This R1 has already been tuned. It has a full exhaust on it. It's got a filter on it. It's been lowered a little bit. In my opinion, I would call this a cookie cutter type setup because it's got the basic bolt-ons. It's got all good parts on it, which is good. It means I can work with it rather than having to replace aftermarket parts, which always sucks to do. The plan for this bike is I'm, for one thing, going to be tuning it, obviously. Uh, we're going to be lowering the front end quite a bit. Supposedly, from what he tells me, I've never ridden the bike. That will be the first thing I do to it, and I'll make sure I get you guys a vlog about that, is uh, the bike doesn't want to stay on the ground. So he has, to, even out of second gear. So what he has to do, put the traction control system on and the wheelie control, and then lose power that way. So, you know, guys know how I feel about this stuff. Horsepower comes after making the bike work. So our goal is to keep this bike on the ground and he wants to keep it stock wheel base for this go around. He said eventually he'll probably put an arm on it, but for now his goal is to keep it on the ground. So my plan here is I will neuter first gear so that when he does do the low rolls he can keep it on the ground, um, but it will be slower unfortunately than if it was, you know, obviously had an arm on it and I could put all the power into it. But either way, the goal as usual, uh, get as much weight out of it slam it and make the chassis work and then I want this bike to be full, fully usable leaving out a second gear and then a neutered first gear to use first for the lower rolls as well. Um, but this will be the first R1 I do and I'm actually looking forward to it because I do really like these bikes. Also, Katie did decide on a bike that she wanted to get and believe it or not, it's an R1. So our plan for that is because she's obviously going to be a new rider and you, some of you are going to be like, oh my god, why are you putting her on an R1 and a newer R1 at that uh, if she's never been in, uh, if she's never ridden a bike before. And listen, my first street bike was a BMW S1000RR and had no problem with that. The only thing you have to work on managing is this right here. That's the only thing that separates an R1 or another equivalent leader bike from all of the other smaller bikes. Now, my plan for her is I'm going to rule out that responsibility for her anyway, and I'm going to turn all of the throttle off. I'm probably going to give her 20% throttle at full twist for her to learn the bike. It's basically going to be a glorified scooter. It'll probably be equivalent to what I have to guess would be a 500, though, because they still do move fairly well at 20% throttle. So that'll be plenty of power for her to learn to ride the bike, and obviously I'm going to have to lower it like crazy because... The biggest amount of confidence you can get as a new rider is if you can flat foot or not. And if you can't flat foot, it feels sketchy. 
Trust me, I know, I'm 5'5", and on my stock S1000RR, footing was scary. But once you get over it and get past it, it's not a big deal. I can jump on a stock ride height bike now and have no problem moving it around. But when you're a new rider, a lot of your confidence, like I said, comes from flat footing. So anyway, enough about the R1 stuff. Let's move on to this right here. This is Mr. Matchett's bike. He is from Florida, but he's stationed in Virginia from the military. We're doing some basic bolt-ons to that. That's going to be getting a swing arm, stuff like that. And I'm also going to be tuning it. Uh, this is a 2019 bike as well. I'm pretty jealous of the 2019s, even though my bike technically makes more power right now. Um, it's just a better platform to start with. And I wish I was trying to find one of these motors for TBN. Unfortunately, I couldn't. Moving on to TBN, something you haven't seen in this channel yet this season, but here it is. Uh, updates to TBN. For one thing, we got a new seat cover. I kind of want to put the carbon one-piece tail on the bike, which replaces the seat, the subframe, all the plastics, and the undertail plastic with uh, two pieces of carbon. The seat will be a separate piece, and the tail itself is all one piece. And I'd probably have that paint matched to kind of look like the ZX-10 RR tail that you see there. I also had my Acropovic bracket and my CRG levers clear-coated. That was done by Eric Strickland down in Texas. He's the man for some of this painting stuff. I also had that fender repainted from him as well. So anyway, moving on to the motor. Normally, I don't trust anybody to touch any of the things I own. Uh, for me, this entire bike has been touched only by my hands, and I've really wanted to keep it that way. Uh, so there's only a few hands that I do trust to do that. And one of them was uh, my buddy Nick, Nick Russo. He owns NPT, or Nick Performance Tuning. He's stationed down in Florida. He did some motor work to this bike this season. So what I did was I pulled the motor out. He then pulled the head off, did his head port, uh, his race head port, actually. Uh, we did a valve job, a thinner head gasket. I believe we took 20 thousandths off the head gasket. And we installed the kit cam that I teased on Instagram. I might have mentioned it in the videos, I can't remember. But I bought a kit cam off of him a while back that I was going to put in and just was always too lazy to do it. So anyway, Nick did the motor work. Uh, then I went down to Miami and met up with all, a lot of the uh, Texas guys, North Carolina guys. And we stayed down in Miami, did some 9 tenths racing with that. Uh, you guys saw those videos with Bobby Yeager. And that bike is now sold, unfortunately. So, FYI, I have taken the Baba Yaga name back. It is no longer belonging to that bike. The name, when I name these bikes for customers, they're for that particular customer. So, unfortunately, the name doesn't follow if they sell that bike. So, don't expect it to. So, now that is just a gray ZX-10 that's out there in the wild. That is not Baba Yaga. I have reclaimed the name, and it'll be reserved for whatever bike I decide to name next. So, anyway, back to TBN. It now has a head cam motor in it, and it, I did put it on Bren's dyno, and I was quite impressed with how much more power it made than Reckless Rodriguez's ZX-10, which is a, almost a carbon copy of my bike. The only difference is he has stock wheels. I have, as you can see, carbon wheels. But the power difference in the dyno was quite intense because I'll roll, I'll roll out some numbers here. I'm not going to say what the bike made for power because you know how people are with dynos, but I'll say comparing it to a carbon copy stock version of itself it made about 10 to 12 more horsepower at peak which is good it started making more power at about 6500 to 7000 rpm and the kicker here is that how much more this bike revs now okay so i want to say let's compare the numbers at 14.5 or so which typically on a stock motor you're kind of way out of the power and you should have shifted by now uh, that's not the case anymore. This bike here made 23 more horsepower at 14.5 over a stock motor because the stock motor is kind of plummeting and this one is carrying arrow straight even at 14.5. So this bike here in Dallas was revved out to about 14.7 or so and it worked pretty good because it just keeps pulling and unfortunately I gotta kind of relearn how to ride it because I'm all over the limiter because how the bike pulls. My brain has kind of been trained to sort of feel when a, a motor starts rolling over and stop making power and in this one it's a little hard to do now because it just keeps going all the way into the limiter realistically i'd bump the limiter even more but i don't want to change the motor because it is still an old motor it's got 13,000 miles on it and it's got an old bucket design valve train um stock cast rods and i'm just not sure i really trust any of that however if i had like a zx10 rr or even just the uh the 2019 motor uh, I would probably not hesitate to bump the rev motor to 15k. Would it be super reliable up there? Hey, you never know. Anything breaks in racing, but I would do it. This motor, I'm going to leave it at probably the 14.7, 14.8 mark. Um, and if it lets go, it lets go. It is what it is. Like I said, that's racing. So anyway, 
Uh, TBN is running solid. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to do some pump gas tuning to it. I did a real quick tune down in Texas, and uh, I love the way the bike ran. It, uh, it swept Dallas. No offense to any of the Dallas guys, but I even flew in Brian from Ohio, a.k.a. Dr. Gap, to do some riding for me for the jockeys, and I didn't end up needing him. I was pretty happy with that. I had about 40 or so pounds on the, the heaviest jockey, and I managed to beat all those guys too, so I was pretty content with that, and uh, I couldn't have really asked for more. So Nick did a solid job on this motor. I do recommend for motor work. It sh you'll see the results in the videos I post up. This is not going to be any racing in this video today, guys. Sorry, this is just more of a catching up type video of me talking about the bikes here and everything going on. But what you will see in future videos uh, coming later this week are some races from Dallas, Texas. Then we went to Houston, Texas. This is all during Texas 2K, by the way. Um, all recorded in Mexico before the COVID-19 came and destroyed our country. I'm going to be trying to get as much behind the scenes on race days as possible because usually my race videos are completely separate from like the vlogging and the garage type stuff where I do no talking in the videos. It's just boom, race videos. So I'm going to try and get some behind the scenes stuff of just maybe some of the guys dicking around and stuff. I showed you that one of the behind the scenes in the trailer video of uh, Brandon aka Reckless Rodriguez getting roasted because he couldn't figure out how to put fuel in, in his bike which was quite comical and Mark aka Sonic Jigsaw was tearing into him pretty good but alright I'm done rambling I know I keep saying that so anyway as usual like the video I always appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one